Good evening and welcome and apologies. I'm a bit on the 11th hour trying to get the hens to go into their coop and the doves as well. But they've decided to play games with dear brother Jean tonight. So here I am and it's so good to welcome our dear sister Jane and our dear brother Christodoulos and those not logged in. I pray one day you will. Good to welcome you. We light this special light to commemorate the bond that we share together, a bond of Franciscan joy, love and peace that is very much rooted in this sacred earth and rooted also in the traditions of the ancient ones. Let us be still as we come together as we break bread in fellowship and love and aware that there are many, many children of the light who are struggling and walking aimlessly with no sense of purpose, many of whom who give lip service to God and whose hearts are firmly closed. We pray this night for a reawakening within all their hearts. So we're here and we begin with the beautiful prayer from Iona. As I utter these prayers from my mouth, O God, in my soul may I feel your presence, the knee that is stiff, O healer, make pliant, the heart that is hard, make warm beneath your wings. The wound that is giving me pain, O oh, best of healers, make whole, and may my hopes and my fears find a listening place with you. And interestingly, I found one of our beautiful prayer cards that Brother Paul, who's a Buddhist monk who lives here with us, shared with me, and it just fell out, and I'm going to read it because I meant to, and it's from His Holiness the Dalai Lama. An amazing man, and it's titled Good Heart. A good heart is both important and effective in daily life. If in a small family, even without children, the members have a warm heart for each other, a peaceful atmosphere will be created. However, if one of the persons feels angry, Immediately, the atmosphere in the house becomes tense. Despite good food or a nice television set, you will lose peace and calm. Thus, things depend more on the mind than on matter. Matter is important. We must have it. We must use it properly. But in this century, we must combine a good brain with a good heart. And those words resonate with my heart. Ah, another one's just arrived. On tolerance, His Holiness says, the person who has a tremendous reserve of patience and tolerance has a certain degree of tranquility and calmness in his or her life. Such a person is not only happy and more emotionally grounded, but also seems to be physically healthier and to experience less illness. The person possesses a strong will, has a good appetite, and can sleep with a clear conscience. Thank you, Your Holiness. I know that we pray for you and thank Almighty God for the example that you have given to me over many years of service. And we are so privileged to have one of your devotees live with us and share the beautiful Buddhist values. So thank you, God. We have a reading here and it's titled, He's Always a Step Ahead. When Wilder, Laman's husband woke 
in the wee hours of the morning, gasping for air and clutching his chest. There wasn't time to wait for an ambulance. She got him into the car and she slumped against the door and she writes, 15 miles to the hospital, we're not gonna make it. Please send help, Lord. A mile down the road, I saw something. Were my eyes playing tricks? It was an ambulance with a paramedic standing beside it. Was he waiting for us? Who could have known to call? I slammed on the brakes and ran screaming for help. They started treatment immediately and rushed Randy to the hospital. The next three days were touch and go. I never left his bedside praying he'd wake up. And when he did, he asked, what happened? You had a massive heart attack and another minute or two, and who knows? You call the paramedics, Randy asked. No, I replied. They were responding to an accident at that intersection. They even called headquarters to confirm they had the right location. Then we came along seconds later and 15 miles on empty roads in the middle of the night Randy's heart attack would have been fatal if the paramedics hadn't been there. I'd say they were in the perfect location, often in a crisis. There's no time to call the pastor or your prayer partner. That's when it's good to know God said, before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. He's on the job 24-7, redeeming your life from destruction, long before you even know you are in trouble. Let us stay with those words. Because being a monastic in the modern world, for me, I'm like a spiritual refugee. That was until I found the Unitarian Chapel in Kendall. 1734, and where Wordsworth worshipped, there was a real sense of homecoming, where you weren't expected to perform and play at a game, but you were, expect you were accepted as someone they loved and respected, and you were not asked what religion you were. But one lady said to me, it's good to see a monk with us, I said, yes, I guess I'm a refugee from my own Christian family where I'm not welcome because I embrace all faiths and because we welcome them into our Franciscan family. And we both smiled and we hugged one another. And I sensed like Randy that God hears our prayers before we even utter them. And God brings to mind and brings into our environment and into our life situations that we call synchronicity or synchronistic moments, like my meeting you here. If you'd have told me 15 years ago, 20 years ago, when I was very ill, that I would end up becoming a contemplative Franciscan who embraced all faiths and who welcomed all faiths into this community of love, I would have said you were barking mad. Because as a devout left-footer or Catholic Christian, I guess my religion was fear-based. But today, it's devoid of fear. And you don't have to pretend. And though we experienced a few turmoils ourselves in the community before Christmas, where a fellow brother went AWOL and, bless them, need a lot of mental support. The Lord God heard our cry and he brought a few close friends round us to nurture us, to support us, to heal our wounds and to give us the space just to be free. 
So you see, none of us knows what the divine has in store for us. But if we're willing to put out the right intention to the universe, I believe God has already heard. And that the right people come into your life, not for a season, but they come into your life for life. And they walk with you as they've walked with me, and they make no demands, only to accept you in love and live each day as if it were our last day. So let us just reflect on all the words we've shared so far. And we ask the spirit of the one true loving Father, Mother, God to breathe the breath of God into our mind, into our body and into our spirit. And now we read from Psalms now by Leslie Brandt. And the psalm I'm guided to read is Psalm 25. I am reaching for you again, O God, from the abyss of defeat, the suffocating shame of failure. I seek your mercy and your help. Enable me to see something of your will for my life. Break through this stifling darkness with some direction and some meaning some purpose for my existence. You are my God. You have promised me salvation. How long must I wait for your response? Have you given me up, O Lord? Are you remembering the unaccountable times that I have failed you? Then I am remembering your steadfast love, that your concern is for those who fall and fumble, that you seek to restore those who humbly reach out for you. I know well that those who walk in your course for their lives find contentment and fulfillment. I have tried to do so and again I have failed. I am aware that those who serve you will know true security and abundance. I have sought this only to be snared and incapacitated by my own weaknesses. O oh God, have mercy. I know my guilt is great. Look upon my emptiness and my loneliness. Consider kindly my afflictions and despair and remember the perpetual presence of my human weaknesses and instincts. Regard once more the pernicious and violent forces that oppose your will in my life. Forgive me my many sins and restore me to yourself. Watch over me and hold on to me, O God, lest I fall again. Oh, that reminds me so much of me. Oh, wow, a powerful sound. And for some reason or another, I'm guided to pick up this little book by Sarah Young, Messages from the Cosmic Christ. And it's a beautiful little book. And this is a message from Jesus, the Cosmic Christ, to our hearts tonight. Come to me with a thankful heart so that you can enjoy my presence. This is the day that I have made. I want you to rejoice today, refusing to worry about tomorrow. Search for all that I have prepared for you, anticipating abundant blessings and accepting difficulties as they come. I can weave miracles into the most mundane day if you keep your focus on me. Come to me with all your needs, knowing that my glorious riches are a more than adequate supply. Stay in continual communication with me 
so that you can live above your circumstances even while you are in the midst of them. Present your requests to me with thanksgiving and my peace which surpasses all comprehension will guard your heart and your mind. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. But what is the Lord, the Cosmic Christ, saying to your hearts this evening? What are you sensing in here? So many beautiful souls who've come and gone from our community, those who've stayed are those who've kept their heart open, a challenge to them, yes, at times, but they've always kept their heart open to receive. But once the head kicks in and starts processing God's word, they somehow end up being alienated. They go off in a huff. They've been challenged and they find it difficult to listen or to surrender their heart, for they sense they're losing control of their life. And in fact, it's the opposite. And I guess that's the joy of being a Franciscan, because Francis wasn't an academic. He was a hands-on monastic, a hands-on modern-day eco-spiritual warrior. And he always demonstrated compassion. And he was dearly loved by Mother Earth and by the animal kingdom. And speaking of that, let's come to our peace prayers from the world's fates by Roger Granger. What hatred and intolerance can do. From the Psalm 22 verse 14, we read, I am poured out like water. And from the Buddhist Ampada, we read, he abused me, he beat me. He defeated me. He robbed me. In those who harbor such thoughts, hatred will never cease. And from the Hindu family we read, we pray for the ability to understand other people's point of view. We pray for the ability to listen and to learn. We pray for those trapped in compulsion to answer violence with violence. And we pray for all movements aimed at bringing together different cultures, lifestyles and aspirations. And we pray for victims of the intolerance that refuses to listen and to learn. O mankind, let your object of life be one and the same let your hearts be equal in feeling and let your minds be united together so that there may be an excellent common status of life for all. And from the Jewish book of Leviticus we read, you shall not hate your brother or sister in your heart. Well, that is lovely. So now let us come to this beautiful reading for, from Annie Forster for Praying Out Loud. And I was guided to share this with you. Spirit of ages, light of life, we gather this evening from many traditions and many ways of life to speak with one strong voice to give thanks and to worship together. Let our prayer be heard, for aren't we all one family with the same wants and needs? Help us to strive for a healthy planet, to work toward peaceful, loving relationships with all of humankind, to achieve one vision of seeing all people fed in body and nourished in soul, 
sheltered from the rain and free from unnecessary fears. Let our thanks be heard, for aren't we all one family with the same joys and sorrows? Hear our prayers of love and beauty. Accept our gratitude for the promise of children. Hearken to our songs of celebration, for music, for learning, for the solid earth beneath our feet, and for the clear distant sky above, we offer thanks. Let our efforts be forever intertwined, for aren't we all one family, gathered here this night, together, grateful for the warmth and re recognition we find in one another's hearts and faces. Thus we pray, and thus we offer thanks, and thus we love. So be it. Amen. And we pray now for each other. We pray for all of you gathered here. We pray for you, dear Sister Jane, that the spirit of divine love will encapsulate your heart and direct your steps each day and give you the strength to acknowledge that you are a co-creator of God. And for you, dear brother Christodoulos, we continually ask our Father, Mother God to touch your heart and to fill it with joy in your ministry to God's homeless in need of shelter. For all gathered here not logged in, we ask the God of peace to fill your heart with inner contentment. And for our dear brother Brian, our Franciscan trucker in America, we give thanks for his humility, his servanthood to the children of God. How blessed we are to know such a beautiful brother as this. For our dear sister Nancy in Mexico, and sister Pam in California, and dear Miriam in New Zealand. For all our brothers and sisters around the world, many of whom live the hermitic life, who don't use the internet, but they are there in prayer. We continue to ask God to bless our small family and that we do not renege on the promise to always be interspiritual, rooted in our Celtic Franciscan values, where we embrace God, a God of many names, in the Cathedral of Life, the landscape. Tonight we pray for peace for peace within the various world religions that we can all come together and share love and ask each other for forgiveness for denying each other God's love. We pray for all refugees and for migrants and for those who are struggling but too proud to ask for help for our religious leaders to walk the talk and to represent the children of God by example and not by lofty words and encyclicals and dogmatic responses. And we pray for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, our reigning monarch and head of the Church of England, and for all the men and women who've given their lives to the divine light in service for unity and peace, who may be wearied at this hour, we remember them. Let us just reach out to one another and visualize that we are touching the divine in each other and we bow in reverence to that divine spark in each other. And we pray, Father, Mother, God, you are 
our beating heart. You are our purpose for living here. We pray your prayer. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to all of us here tonight our daily bread. Forgive us the times when we have wronged you, when we have hurt ourselves by denying ourselves love and by failing to share your love and your gifts with others who are in need. Lead us not astray. Protect us from procrastination, from evil, despair and hopelessness. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Excuse me. And our closing prayer. <coughs> Excuse me. Another beautiful Celtic blessing. Christ stands before us and peace is in his mind. Sleep, O oh sleep, in the calm of all calms. Sleep, O oh sleep, in the love that is love. Sleep we this night in the God of all life. So go in peace to love and to serve our God. And as we blow out this light, we blow the peace the love and the joy of Frank Clara, of Francis and Claire, into your hearts and into the lives of all your loved ones. Amen. So namaste, shalom, inshallah, pax et bonum, om shanti, solodi caritas, salam alaikum, and may the peace of all that is sacred to you keep your heart open for the prophecies that are now being revealed to the children of love, the children of God, and those who are willing to listen will know what these prophecies mean for them and for the whole family of God. I wish you a blessed evening wherever you may be until we meet again. The peace of God be with you. Take care. And I best go now and lock up my hands. <laughs>